This video is about the SCP command. You can copy a file from one location to another using SCP, just like you can with CP in Linux or the copy command in Windows. The way SCP is different from those programs is it can also copy files and directories between computers, which is unlike the CP command in Linux and the copy command in Windows. Let's dig into the SCP command. So first of all, if you have any kind of Unix-like computer, say for example, a Mac, a Linux box, or some other flavor of Unix, then you'll have the SCP command by default, which is great. If you have a Windows box, I'm gonna slide over here to my Windows machine, and you look for SCP, you'll notice that by default, it's not there. So if we're going to be moving files between our Windows box and a Linux box, we need to get SCP on the Windows box. And by the way, this video is for the command line version of SCP, not WinSCP, which is the GUI version. So where can we get SCP? Well, we can consult the source of all knowledge, Google, and find SCP. Let's go to putty.org. And the Putty website has a range of software products where those software products allow you to connect to a computer remotely or to copy files between computers. The program we're interested in, of course, is SCP. It says you can download Putty here. Let's click right there. Let's scroll down to the SCP client right here. I'm gonna get the 32-bit version. If you have a 64-bit computer with a 64-bit processor and your version of Windows is 64-bit, feel free to get the 64-bit version of PSCP. PSCP, of course, stands for Putty SCP. Putty SCP is SCP, which is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna put this on my desktop. Save it there. I'm gonna close this window. And I see PSCP here. Now, if I go to my command line and type in SCP, wait, it's still not a recognized file. What gives? Well, SCP is not in my path. With it here on the desktop, I can either launch it from my desktop or if I want the freedom of launching the SCP program from anywhere, then I need to put this executable in my path or I need to add its current directory location to the Windows path environment variable. I am going to copy this file to a directory location that is in the current Windows path variable. How can I see what's in the current Windows path variable? Here's how we do that. We go to control panel and to system and advanced system settings and environment variables. And then in the system variables section, we look for the path variable, which is here. I'm gonna click on edit, which will bring that up in a different window. I'm gonna copy all the contents of this variable and I'm gonna write these out to a notepad. And we're gonna paste that here. And in the path, each directory given in the path variable is separated from other directories in the path variable by a semicolon. I'm just gonna hit a return by each of these semicolons so I can get a clear look at all of the directories that are given in the path variable. After getting a listing of each of the directories in the path variable, I can choose a directory in which I want to copy my PSCP file. And I think I'm gonna copy it in the system root directory here. I know that the system root directory contains the system32 directory. 
which means that system root directory is C colon windows. I'll cancel that X out of this, get rid of that, bring up my windows Explorer, go to C, the C drive, the windows directory. And if I scroll down, I see the system 32 directory there but I'm just going to put this in the system root directory, which is C colon windows. So I'll make a copy of the PSCP file and place it in that windows directory. And it shows me the file here. I also am going to rename this file to just SCP so that when I want to execute the command, I can just issue the SCP command. So let's see what happens now when I run this command from the command line. There we go. It gives me the command line syntax. Now I'm ready to copy files from Windows to Linux or Unix or whatever. I'm going to close these extra windows. And I have some files in this weird named directory. Of course, you'll go to whatever directory you want to copy files from. And I have a directory called log nine. Actually, any of these directories will do. I'm going to copy one of these directories as an example over to my Linux box. And let's scoot over to the Linux box here. I'm going to go to the temp directory. I have two files in there, nothing else. Let's copy back over here to the, uh, the window side. Let's copy using SCP, our log nine directory to copy a directory. You'll use a dash R flag. The dash R flag recursively copies the contents of directories so that you get all of the directory contents. And if you're copying a directory, the dash R flag is required. And when you're copying to another machine, enter the user that you want to copy as with the at symbol, then the host name or the IP address of that machine and a colon followed by the directory that you want to copy your file or files or directories into then return. It's going to ask you for the password of the user that you specified. Once you enter that password, you should be good to go. It says it copied hundred percent of that file. Let's go and look and see what happened on the Linux box. I had those two files before if I do an LS. Now I have three. I have the log nine directory. If I go into that directory and do an LS, I get this file here. If I go back over to the windows box and I do a listing of the log nine directory, we see that same file here. So cool. That works. What happens if you type in the command incorrectly? For example, what would happen if I didn't put a directory here after the colon? Let's see. It says hundred percent. Let's check and see what happened. Maybe it copied it over to the root directory of the Linux box. Let's do an LS on the root directory. I don't see it. Let me go to the home directory of root, do an LS. It copied it to the home directory. Look at there. That's cool. So if you don't specify the directory, it's going to copy it to the home directory of the user that you specify. Back over to the window side. What happens if I forget the dash R flag? Let's see. It tells you that log nine is not a regular file. In other words, without the dash R flag, SCP expects 
a regular file, not a directory. So the command doesn't work if you're trying to copy a directory and you try to do so without the dash R flag. All right, so this has been a video on how to set up SCP on Windows so that you can copy a file from Windows to Linux. I might cover it going from Linux to Windows at some point in the future. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section.